Welcome back to Ginger Cat DIY, the place where I do stuff. I've noticed a lot in the last year that a lot of YouTubers and content creators have moved and have been showing how they've been renovating their new spaces, myself included. Well, I've moved and I've renovated some spaces, but I didn't put that on YouTube. Since I didn't film any of that, I thought that I would renovate a castle. I'm so excited. Look at this. This is going to be my new display case. And over the course of several episodes, I'm going to remodel this into something really great. I hope. I'll take you to the steps of what I do to turn this balsa wood castle into a beautiful palace display. Let's take a tour of my castle. All right, so we have DIY Dad here and he is going to help me plan out. So the lights are going on the inside. I just did not have enough wiring to wire it from the inside. And my plan had been to wire it, drill holes, and then stick the, the lighting inside and mm -hmm. then create a facade. And then I realized faster, cheaper, easier is if I use this plus the mountains and mountains of wire that I have, uh, it's ivy. The front of castles mm -hmm. have ivy. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Let this little... That's good. Yeah. Oh, pick a boot. It looks like a weird mouth. <laughs> uh, on the inside. Here's what the inside looks like. Uh, in here is our battery pack. Mm, that'll work. I can't actually film and do things. So that's where the battery pack is. Okay. Lighting is the part that I need the most help with. Okay. Well, typically on, on something like this, to, in order to hide the wires and whatnot, put the lights up here in the corner. And then what it does is it shines down so you get a whole, whole effect, but you don't normally see the lights. Okay. Right. So I tried that. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't fit. Oh. Um, so I have to get two strings of light. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is... All my lights come along through here and then cross over and then I can't close it okay because even though this is going to be displayed mm -hmm. um, behind me um, at some point I'm gonna need to close it up and move it if I need that space or if I want to rearrange my backdrop mm -hmm. and um, all that wire is gonna come over and then even if I just wanted to be permanently op open, then mm -hmm. I don't have to do the, the, the outside right. of yeah. it at all. Um, how do I hide those? I'd still have to make another uh, cover, uh, like another framing mm -hmm. for it. Yeah, you would. Or if you if you don't need this bright of a light, mm -hmm. okay, you could use those little fairy lights, the little LED fairy lights. Oh, you mean these? Yes, those, those would work pretty good too. I would need three of them. What a coincidence. What? I, I might have several myself. You have some of these? Mm -hmm. I think so. Um, so then we have to think about battery packs, which are fine because they just kind of yeah, tuck they, yeah. um, up here pretty pretty okay. Um, the other thing with, with these are you can poke a hole through this. This is balsa wood. It's really, really soft. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I can so just like cut grooves yep. mm -hmm. and then put just, them through yep, and exactly. then just do a little wood filler. Mm -hmm. I have that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to make, with the exception of this and then of course sandpaper because I don't have sandpaper, make right. everything with things I already have or if they're donated. Mm -hmm. At first I thought I would take a piece of the floor from down below and use it to create a new floor up above, but that didn't work. So I took the steps off the stairs and fit that 
up there much better. I say cut once, but what you don't see is that I had to try this again with another piece because I ended up breaking it. So measure twice, cut, you know, a few times. I eventually get it right enough. Don't use toothpick on the silicone uh, anything. It leaves scratches. So gather up some sawdust, get some bigger bits, smaller bits, and we're just gonna make a wood filler. Measure your dowel next to the stairs to make your ladder. Line them up nice and straight and add some tape. More tape. A little bit more tape. Measure straight across to keep the same length. Cutting and sanding. Later, I find a much better way to cut these little wood bits. How about some more tape? And more tape! And even more tape! That's enough tape. Cut between the spaces between the tape so that all of your rungs are going to be the same length. Untaping isn't as much fun. This is the part where I start to feel extremely clever about how I put the ladder together. Put a length of sticky side up tape on your table and add a ruler. Don't forget to struggle with your tape because if it's not awkward, is it really ginger cat DIY? I placed my rungs about every one inch, just a little bit off the ruler so that the dowel will fit nice and snug. Make sure they're all snuggly or cuddly, whatever's your preference. Place the second dowel parallel to the first one and push it in as close as you can. Now dip, dip, dip those little rungs on both ends and place them back at their one inch marks. Now's when you stop messing with them and let them dry. Whenever I take hardware off of something and I have a lot of screws or when I'm starting a new kit, I always put the screws in a piece of styrofoam that I had left over from some packing. It keeps all the screws and nails and bits from going all over the place. And it does take me a few days to do this activity and I didn't lose any. And cue the sanding montage, because that's it, friends, for the rest of this episode. It's sanding. I did create a couple of sanding tools to help get into the smaller places. My thumb was really bothering and I didn't want to put my brace on, but eventually I do. I started with 400 grit and then I used 600 grit and those surfaces were so smooth, my little creations could go ice skating on them. Well, hello, Ryan Human Man. Did you come to help? No? 
then stop touching my stuff. Don't forget to floss your castle regularly. Time for some beauty shots. How fun was it meeting DIY Dad? Uh, he's really great. He's an electrician, as I've said in the past, and I really like to consult with him and my brother, who uh, also is very mechanically inclined, and to get more ideas of how I want this castle to go. They gave me a lot of really great ideas. This episode talked a lot about planning and sanding, and sanding and sanding and sanding and sanding. It looked great. By the end of the night, I was exhausted. My thumb hurt, I was tired, dust everywhere. I must have sneezed about 600 times. And it was a nice, humid night. And all of my work was pretty much undone by morning. Well, it, it is what it is. Stay tuned for part two, we're going to do some painting and you get to see some of my process on how I decided on some of the colors. Painting will be a lot more entertaining than sanding was. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, notification bell. See you in the next one. Bye. The colors. It, it was, it's good. Um, um. That was a fun process. That, uh, mm. Mm. You get to see me. Mm. You get to see me. Because I'm corporeal. I'm a person. Ugh. It's been a week since I've done this. You'd think that I know how.